It started from humble beginnings back in the early 90s. Ladies and gentlemen, run and run! Then, quickly crashed and burned. Are we prepared? I don't know, you're, you're, you were supposed to prepare everything. I'm just drinking. But Rose like a phoenix from the ashes in 2018. And welcome to episode one of the Ron and Brian podcast. I am Ron. It's me, Brian. Now join us for the two-year anniversary of the Ron and Brian podcast. Brian, you're, are you a little choked up uh, over there with us uh, kind of reliving a little bit, going back in the day uh, to our CDB days, and now uh, here we are, two years of the podcast. Try, try, try and hold it together, my friend. I'm going to have to. I'm going to tell you something, Ron. Um, the fact is we have been doing this for two solid years, podcasting. Now, clearly our uh, radio show that we had on uh, terrestrial radio has been going on since the nineties, but you know, we made the intelligent decision to move over to the podcasting world. And uh, really we've flourished. You know, I would say we are at our, we are at our, uh, I don't want to say apex because that implies that it's, it's only, it's only down from here, but I, I think we, we continue to soar. Would you say we're at our Zenith? I did not read any Chaucer, so I'm going to say you are probably using the correct word. All right. Um, so two years. Uh, it's, it's been fun along the way. I think we've got a great episode here. We're kind of keeping it low key due to obvious uh, conditions throughout the world today. Uh, last year, if you remember, at our one-year anniversary, we had a number of uh, celebrities lauding us. Uh, we said, you know, we appreciate it. Um, but uh, we actually had a fan of the podcast, Penn Gillette, uh, sent us a message uh, of congratulations. So uh, should we just get that kind of out of the way first, play that for everybody? Well, he did ask that we play it within the first 10 minutes. So right. I think, well, you know, he took time out of his busy schedule. So I think it's only fair that we uh, abide by uh, his request. All right, here we are. Hey, Ron. Hey, uh, Brian, congratulations on two years together. Two years together. That's pretty good. And uh, I was so excited about your anniversary that I wanted to do uh, some magic. So I was going to make uh, the Statue of Liberty disappear. But instead, I made your job disappear. <laughs> kind of fucked up. But it's a temporary setback. You'll do fine. I love you both. Peace. The comedian, you know, joking about uh, my unemployment. That's all right. The thing, you know, and I appreciate him recording it for us. The thing that's confusing to me is I'm not 100% certain that he's aware um, that we do a podcast. He was almost speaking of us as if we were a couple. Interesting. Interesting. And I'm, and I'm okay with that. You know, a lot of people make that, uh, make that mistake in, in thinking we are a couple. We are definitely heterosexual life mates, no question about it. Um, but yeah, agreed, it really agreed. seemed like he was looking at this more as like a two-year relationship anniversary um, versus the anniversary of the podcast. But regardless, um, we, we appreciate his well wishes. There's nothing wrong with the assumption that he has made. In fact, uh, I take it as a badge of honor that he feels that you and I are so woke that we would be part of the LGBTQP community. All right. Uh, well, that, let's, uh, that, that final P is for podcasters. <laughs> there we go. Um, well, let's keep things rolling, as always, with some drinking. Drink of the week. Nazdrovia. <laughs> Drink of the week. Who's drink of the week? Drink of the week. Drink of the week. So, uh, as we had mentioned last week, um, you know, uh, you know, our, our drink of the week intern passing away uh, due to ingesting some uh, some cleaning supplies, um, and we, you know, we were going to do a poll, and we felt too soon. 
Um, you know, I, I wish I had actually learned the intern's name. Uh, Brian, do you remember what his name was? Um, his resume came to us. I, uh, you know what? I'm going to be, uh, you know, it, uh, considering the, the impact that he had on our lives, mm. our podcast, um, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing. And if I were to be a more caring person, I, I would, would be embarrassed that, uh, I do not know his name. Um, but he was such a special person. I feel um, like it might've been Steve. So let's maybe just go with that. Hashtag RIP Steve. Steve. But we'll work on uh, we'll work on getting it back, uh, getting the poll back next week. Obviously, we can't get Steve back because he's already been buried. Uh, but Brian, what for this special evening? What are you drinking on our two year anniversary? I have a theme, really beverage of choice. All right. So I went into the archives and pulled out a beer that we had uh, a couple weeks ago, back in March, and that would be the uh, from. The Wait White up. Elm yeah. Brewing Company. Let's see if I'll hold it this way so it's not fuzzed out by my uh, dope background. And this is called Eh? And it's a coffee theme. So it has, uh, it is a stout made with maple syrup, cold brewed coffee, and lactose. I did that in your <laughs> honor because I, I know lactose. That you, you fucking love lactose in your coffee. So here I've got my mug, which I've poured it into. I do remember that from uh, when we drank it uh, a couple of months back. Uh, it's tasty. Nice, uh, nice mm. coffee flavor. Nice and smooth. But I'm not done. Oh. I am not done. All right. What because else? I also. Oh, wait. There's more. Continuing the theme of coffee flavored beverages. Ooh. You've got it right here. I've got Jameson whiskey that has been infused with natural cold brew coffee flavor. So in addition to the beer that I'm drinking, I'm about to do a shot. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see. And that frosted Ron and Brian uh, podcast side. shot glass available at ronandbrianpodcast.com. I'm going to do a shot of this right now, and then I'm going to let you see what this glass looks like empty. All right. I'm very curious. Uh, I've seen the Jameson cold brew. Very curious as to the taste of it. That is the shit. Really? Look at that. Well, the, the, oh my uh, God. the shot glass I know is awesome, but how is the Jameson? Oh, did I just appreciate the fuck out of that? <laughs> well, I'm not, I may not be done yet this episode, but wow, you know what it is? <laughs> it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have that like overly strong whiskey flavor. Okay. You know, like something like I like to put an ice cube in my whiskey to kind of sure. take the edge off, just like I like to take the edge off after a long day of podcasting. But, uh, this the right where that edge comes in the coffee infused flavor takes it right off. I, if 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 Jameson, if you're listening and you want to sponsor this podcast, let me know. Brian's all about it. All right. Well, I went uh, with our good friends as always at Broken Goblet Brewing. Uh, this is a crowler I picked up there. Uh, did not have a chance to crack it open. Haven't even tried this one yet. This is Death Claw Juice. This is a kettle sour with uh, mango and the lactose. Again, really big into the lactose lately. Um, and I've actually been drinking this for a little bit, though. It is very, very good. Mm. Now, walk me through the flavor palette. It is, it's not, it's not overly sour. Like it's a, it's a mild, it's like, it's a tart maybe is a better way to describe it. Um, definitely getting the mango flavor in there. Definitely getting the milky aftertaste from the, uh, from the lactose. Um, it is a pretty solid beer, a great uh, spring summertime beer. Kind of you could sit out on your patio and just uh, get sloshed with. It's only 5.6%, so it's not too bad. And would you say that you enjoy getting schlossed? I mean, I think as we heard in our opening, I do like the drinking from time to time. I love, um, how much of that, of that uh, uh, college radio show do you have? Uh, I uh, unfortunately could only find a few clips of it. We may have to reach okay. out to some individuals to see if they still have the full episode. Uh, but I actually pulled that clip uh, from a uh, a clip of people that had gotten suspended from that college radio station, of which we were we were two of those. 
And can we agree that we have become the most successful former college DJs from SUNY Albany that got suspended uh, when you look at what we've done with our lives? I mean, I, I, mean I think, you know, we were, as it, as it mentioned in the introduction, we were at a very low point. Uh, it yeah. took us, you know, 20 some years to get back up on our feet again. But once yeah. we did that, um, it's been nothing but but highs and uh, and higher highs each and every week. We were high back then too. Part of the reason, also, we got suspended, but neither here nor there. All right, wonderful. Let's see what's, let's see what's bothering us this week. Ron and Brian's beef of the week. You know, we've often talked about remixing some of our music, some of our themes, but I guarantee that is one that will stay with us forever. That is not going anywhere. I just love that one. Anyway. I Ryan, love that one so much. What is your beef today? I want you to know something. Okay. I had, um, all things considered, I had a pretty decent week. Good. I looked back. Considered. And well, I'm currently in lockdown in a stay-at-home uh, uh, order from my governor. Uh, I need to wear a uh, face mask when I walk out of the house. Uh, some of my closest friends and uh, uh, and the people I hold dear are unemployed and struggling financially. Um, there are animals in the Philadelphia uh, uh, region society region that uh, currently are in kill shelters and they need our support. Go to uh, uh, the Philadelphia Animal Welfare Society to to donate if you can. Um, and I thought to myself, there's, you know, I, I feel fortunate, but like what really irked me the most? And I'm going to say the people at peapod.com this week Ooh, were the ones peapod. that set me the most. In, in, the, in the firing hairs. Now, here we go. I do not know what it is like in terms of the online grocery delivery availability where you are. Where I'm at, it has been a absolutely not gonna happen since I would say before the lockdown. People had already started to fill up slots and I'm not going to wake up at uh, one o'clock in the morning so that I could see if they have uh, opened up the windows for the following day. But every now and then I check to see Fresh Direct, Amazon Fresh, Amazon Funky Fresh, Amazon Funky Fresh for the next millennium, and uh, Peapod. Out of nowhere, on Thursday, I went to Peapod.com and I saw availabilities. Like, like the heavens parting and welcoming you in. I ordered cases of water. I ordered two packs of uh, two liters of soda. Everything that was heavy. Everything I did not want to have to carry from the supermarket. Sure. Listen, I don't mind buying, uh, you know, uh, vegetables and fruits and bringing it home. I have no problem doing that, but I don't want to have to carry four cases of water. Not going to happen. So I ordered pastas. I ordered uh, soups, you know, the jars, bottles, yeah. things like that. I would have ordered Jameson cold brewed <laughs> coffee um, infused whiskey, but um, they don't offer it. Anyway, to make a long story short, I get my delivery on Sunday morning and they are missing four items. Mm, what for? Uh, a two packages of chicken breasts. That's not good. There's your meat shortage. Um, we'll save that. Put a pin in that. We're going to bring <laughs> okay. it back. Um, three boxes of Raisin Bran cereal. It's a lot of Raisin Bran. You want to keep yourself regular. I don't want to have to carry it from the... Uh, from the supermarket. I bought like okay. the big family style, it's, you know, okay. um, a box of Honey Nut Cheerios. Heart healthy. And, and three packages of thin spaghetti. Okay, pasta when you want a carb load. So I go online and it is, uh, they, everything says, if you have a problem with your order, click on the, my profile, check my accounts, check my orders and you know, you can, file a uh, complaint of missing items right there. Unfortunately, because my order was, st was, was still in their system as um, being out for delivery, it wasn't 
processed yet, so I could not file the complaint online. They, my next uh, option was to call Ooh. their customer service department. I feel that probably didn't go well. How long do you think I had to uh, sit on hold before I got a live voice? Let's see. I was on hold with unemployment for an hour and 38 minutes. So I'm going to say you're probably in the hour and 15 minute range for, uh, for any grocery delivery company right now. One hour and 25 minutes before Ooh. I got a live voice. That's dedication. However, and this is the silver lining, the woman that I uh, answered the phone, apologetic, understanding, um, could not have been more helpful. Still my beef of the week. The employee, <laughs> she saved the day, but Peapod ordering delivery um, did not work, and, uh, and they uh, clearly need to uh, do something, hire more people, train them, uh, have cu uh, customer service people. Because hour and 20 is not, uh, that's not acceptable. No. I will say we are getting much better with getting uh, grocery delivery uh, windows around here. I was actually able to today get same day delivery <clears throat> from Whole Foods through Amazon. So, and they actually had everything I ordered. So it's, it's getting better around here, but I feel for you. Do you have to remind me that Whole Foods does not deliver to my zip code? It's, it's, uh, I, I feel for you, and neither does Wegmans, apparently. No, Wegmans will deliver in Brooklyn. Because I had another uh, Rise and Bake Wegmans pizza for dinner tonight. Fantastic. And Son of a bitch. Dollars. What a bargain. Anyway, uh, what's my beef, you ask, Brian? Ron, what's your beef? So, uh, well, I believe you, uh, you remember last week where my beef was my inability uh, to get some herbs and spices, most specifically garlic powder at the grocery store. Well, I went online searching for it because going on Amazon, Amazon Pantry, you know, nothing happened. I found a website called iHerb.com. Sounds a little sketchy, but uh, you know, it had, you know, actually had like a US based office, had decent reviews online. So I got myself some, uh, some, some uh, garlic powder. I got uh, Italian seasoning, got a little lemon pepper in case I want to, you know, do some fish. I like a little lemon pepper and just some whole black peppercorns because why the fuck not? Needed to get that free shipping. So place the order, um, get like an email like the same day, like, all right, your, your, your order shipping tomorrow, you'll have it by May 1st. So May 1st comes, I don't get the order. It's, you know, it's basically like, it's one of those deals where they printed the shipping label, but nothing ever got shipped. So I'm like, all right, right, I'll give them a few days, see what happens. So a few days goes by, nothing, still hasn't shipped. So I email their customer service, wait a day. They're like, well, you know, there's a lockdown in place. Right, but if you're a company and you're trying to ship stuff, maybe you shouldn't be selling things if there's a lockdown in place. So it went back and forth and they were like, well, we'll ship at some point this month. Okay, that's great, but I think I'd just rather have a refund instead. And so then they went back and forth. They're like, well, we'll, we'll put through a reship. And I'm like, but if it can't ship, how will- And you didn't ship, how can you- <laughs> How can you reship when it hasn't been shipped in the first place? So finally, they are like, all right, we will uh, we'll refund you. And to make up for it, we're going to give you a 5% discount on your next order. <laughs> I was like, ooh. On your next five, order? Yeah, on the next order, that won't be delivered either. That, that you will not be placing either. I, I, yeah. I mean, listen, if it was 20%, maybe I'd roll the dice again. But 5%, not worth it. Okay, so here's my question to you. Um, how much did you spend in total? Um, it would have been what I spent like 21 bucks. Okay. 25 they, bucks. Maybe. Did they give you a refund? They did. Yes. Okay. So the theme here with our beefs of the week is the, um, the current failing state of uh, U.S. Shippers. I guess food shipping or food delivery. Yeah. It's still a it's, major challenge right now. It's so odd that you and I had were were right along the same vein of our beefs. But we're um this is a gen if you have got uh web-based establishments that are taking orders, it is imperative that they be able to um go through and and uh and send out those orders. Correct. Well, hopefully those hopefully now that they've been called on the carpet on the Ron and Brian podcast. 
those companies will get their act together. If you're talking about iHerb, um, and they may actually consider this bad publicity on their part. <laughs> you, Maybe they may get to sponsor the races of the year tournament. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. You may get ten percent off your next order now. Fingers crossed, my friends. Fingers crossed. Uh, you know what was also a, a beef of mine this week? Uh, the steak that you had Saturday night. No, it was this new uh, video that came out this week, uh, supposedly uh, unveiling uh, all of the uh, the hidden secrets about COVID nineteen that the yeah. man didn't want you to know, called Plandemic. Um, which at first I thought the the 26 minute video was just like the entire thing, but that apparently is just the trailer for the larger Plandemic movie. Which, if your trailer is 26 minutes, how long is the goddamn movie? You're telling me that the 26 minutes that I spent <laughs> is the introduction to the actual video? Apparently so. At first I thought it was the entire video, uh, but then I read and turned out it's just a trailer for this Plandemic movie. Oh my yeah. God, 26 minutes? Now what, what really, uh, I guess, is frustrating is how quickly people are willing to share videos like this still um, with a lot of sketchy information, you know, the people will question, um, you know, obviously question people in the White House, they will question scientists, they will question the WHO, they will question the CDC, but they see some random people on YouTube, and they're like, all right, I'll share this, uh, and we'll let people make up their minds. So it was, I, I don't know about you, Brian, I got a little fired up, so I did a Hold little on. bit of, yes, before you get that far, I think that you are letting off the, I think you're giving a, a, a slide, a pass to the people that are sharing this video. I don't think that there are people who are spreading it around saying, hey, here's just another perspective. Maybe, you know, keep an open mind to it. What I've seen a lot of this week is a lot of social media posts having to do with pandemic, where it is, aha, this is, that I told you that this was a hoax. I told you that this was about big pharma, the CDC, you know, and uh, and the drug companies are in uh, are in cahoots with the World Health Organization and China. And this is a man like this is like they are using this not as hey here's something to consider, but this is the proof that we have we have we have always been uh, saying is out there. There was, there was that component too, definitely. So people are, people are just putting this out there like it is factual. So yes. um, I did a little research. And again, we, you know, don't take our word for it. You can literally do this kind of research. I did it in a day um, just by using Google uh, and, and found out some information on the folks that put together this pandemic video. Um, so first off, it was, it's produced by a company called Elevate Studios. So Elevate is a production company located in Ojai, California. Uh, some of the featured work on their website is a documentary called Be Brave about filmmaker Daniel Northcott, uh, which is best known for Daniel's sister, Erin, raising almost $185,000 on Indiegogo in 2015 to fund the documentary, which is yet to deliver anything to its backers. Uh, it has been listed on IMDb as in, quote, post-production since September of 2016. Uh, the director of, for this project was the founder of Elevate Studios and also the person interviewing in the, in the documentary, uh, Mickey Willis. Uh, some Ooh. other uh, Elevate credits, uh, Neurons to Nirvana. That was a documentary about psychedelic medicine that was funded by raising $35,000 on Kickstarter. Uh, the uh, public safety announcement, The Compost Story. Um, they also did Breaking Band, a six-episode series on AXS-TV in 2015, as well as a commercial for the Nevada Board of Tourism. So pretty prestigious studio right there, um, which is headed again by uh, Mickey Willis, who you see in the pandemic video. He is the founder slash CEO of Elevate Studios. Uh, seems to be his biggest claim to fame. Although in the, in the video, I like how he lists himself as father slash filmmaker. 
that's that's when you know some bullshit's up there. What he should have labeled himself as is Mickey Dream Eyes. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I could get lost in those bad boys. Understood. Uh, so he, if you look, he is very good at repeating the same information over and over. He does not have much of a digital footprint, but when you search for him online, the bios and, and the, the blurbs um, all have a, a lot of repetition to them. Brian, you were going to say something? I would like to do an impersonation of him. Okay, go right ahead. All right, here it is. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> Hold on. Are you trying to get your eyes that wide open? Yeah. So what you're saying is, is that they wouldn't let you take your notebooks? <laughs> very good. Very good. Oh, cool. And scene. But anyway, uh, so the message that he puts out repeatedly online is that, quote, Elevate is one of the most prolific creators of socially conscious media. Of course, we all remember his 2000 effort, the movie Prank, which scored Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf of Howard Stern Show fame. Um, in his <laughs> various bios online, he claims that his life's goals were changed on September 11th, 2001. Uh, depending on which bio you're reading, he was either in the Twin Towers hours before they fell, or he watched them fall from a nearby high rise. These bios state that he organized and led a group of civilians to aid rescue workers and search for survivors, but there are no independent sources available that can confirm this. He was the recipient of the Conscious Life Humanitarian Award either in 2008 or 2011, again, depending on which bio you read. Uh, he also claims to be involved in projects that you can find no connection to him online. Uh, a film festival bio states that he and Elevate Studios were involved in the marketing and distribution of The Secret, the 2006 movie that became one of the highest grossing independent movies ever, but you can't find him or his company associated with this movie anywhere other than in this bio. Uh, another bio describes the documentary Weed the People, which recently came out on Netflix as, quote, his movie, uh, when in fact he was a low-listed associate producer. Um, one thing I did find that I think is the most egregious is on his Twitter account, where he last tweeted on January 5th, 2012, quote, try this on, I am an artistpreneur. Just that made That's gross. Me. Yeah, just that made That's me. gross. Can I do another impersonation of him? <laughs> Please do. We got nothing but time here. Hold on. Settled in. Fine. Now, if you're watching on Zoom, if you're watching on Zoom or you're well, oh, if you're watching right on now. YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, which we've recorded via Zoom, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to watch this. But hold on. I have to get into character. All right. Find your center. Breathe in. Use all those tricks you learned at all those schools. And this is the same Dr. Fauci who's right now in charge of our nation's response to coronavirus? You do, you're doing, you could, you could record one of these, uh, these things yourself. All right, well, obviously, the, the pandemic uh, movie, trailer, whatever the hell it is, uh, really revolves around Dr. Judy Mikovich. Um, we this start lady, this lady knows her shit. I mean, <laughs> the, it, if you watch this thing, it is becomes incredibly clear that here is a woman that has always done the right thing and has been held back by the man. You may want to you may want to put a pin in that for a moment. So pin? Mickey Willis at the beginning of the uh, pandemic video uh, claims that Mikovich's 1991 doctoral thesis, quote, revolutionized the treatment of HIV AIDS. Now, while it is true Mikovits did work on the thesis titled Negative Regulation of HIV Expression in Monocytes, uh, she was one of seven working on that doctoral thesis, and the thesis actually did not have any major impact on the treatment of HIV and AIDS. Um, Willis also comments about a 2009 article from Mikovich published in the journal Science that sent, quote, shockwaves through the medical community. The article was about work she had done while working at the Whitmore Peterson Institute. Uh, she was doing research into a retrovirus called xenotropic murine leukemia virus related virus, or XMRV for short, and its association with chronic fatigue syndrome. 
Uh, soon it came out that other researchers couldn't replicate the study's results, including many of the same researchers from the original study. Uh, the research came under intense scrutiny. In July 2011, Science issued a statement of concern about the article, which led to a partial retraction in October of 2011, and then a full retraction in December of 2011. Basically what happened, her and a graduate student were working on this, uh, this study. They had 20 cases. Uh, two of them uh, gave the result connecting this, H this XMRV with chronic fatigue syndrome. They then uh, changed the, the, uh, the study conditions until all 20 studies reflected the findings, uh, hence the uh, retraction in December 2011. Uh, Mikovich was fired from the Whitmore Peterson Institute in September of 2011 over concerns uh, about her integrity. And she talks about how uh, she was jailed because Big Pharma was scared of her. Uh, but actually on November 18, oh, you want, you, you're stopping me for a moment, Brian? <laughs> Are you doing your Mickey Willis again? So what you're saying is, they held you in jail for five days without charges? So uh, there were actual charges on November 18th, 2011. She was arrested on charges of possession of stolen property and unlawful taking of computer data, equipment, supplies, or other computer-related property. Uh, the Institute also filed a lawsuit claiming she had wrongfully taken lab notebooks, a computer, and other proprietary data. So there were actually charges, were actually reasons why she went to jail. Wasn't Big Pharma, uh, she may have uh, stolen some things. Um, in the years since that arrest, she has been embraced by the medical conspiracy community who claim that the deep state has been trying to silence her. She has made false claims linking XMRV to autism and cancer, has appeared at a number of anti-vaccination events, appeared on unreliable websites such as Natural News, and given talks at fringe conferences like The Truth About Cancer and Autism One. So that's who we're dealing with in Dr. Mikovits. Let's look at some of the false statements made in Plandemic. Uh, they speak about how medical error is the third leading cause of death in the United States. This is a falsehood that has been repeatedly debunked, uh, but continues to stick around. Um, Mikovich is asked if she is anti-vaccine, which she denies. However, her body of work contradicts that. Uh, she makes the statement that SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, was manipulated and studied in a lab and then escaped. She makes the claim that if the virus had evolved naturally, it would have taken 800 years. There is no evidence to support either claim, and she also has no background in virology. Um, she likens COVID-19 to COPD, which it is not. Uh, she pushes the conspiracy theory that doctors are being pushed to misclassify COVID-19 deaths for not financial reasons. Uh, this is a theory that was also pushed by Dr. Dan Erickson and Dr. Artin Mas Masihai, uh, who produced their own video of falsehoods and mistruths about COVID-19, which we talked about the other week, uh, which has been removed from YouTube and other platforms for violating terms of service uh, because the information was false. She claims that Italy was hit so hard because the virus for the flu vaccine they used was grown in dog cells, and dog cells have a lot of coronavirus. Not true. Um, she claims that getting the flu vaccine increases your chances of getting COVID-19 by 36%. Spoiler alert, it does not. And uh, one of my favorite lines is she also asked why we are closing the beaches because there are, quote, healing microbes in the sand. Yes. So this is the information that people were passing around um, and saying, no. Oh, just take a look at it from this point of view. Um, I, I don't okay. know. It, it's a little nuts. Hold on a second. And this is where I'm going to take the opportunity to play devil's advocate with you. <laughs> okay. It's clear that this pandemic, uh, I was going to call it a movie. Now I realize it's only a trailer. It's clear that this is a piece of garbage. Yes. Mickey Willis it's clear that he did pornography in his early part of his career. I mean, with a face like that, 
there's no way he did not do pornography. He's a and if he did, more power to him. I think it, I, I, I encourage all of his, uh, the work that he did in the late 90s. Um, it's clear this woman's a nut job. Well, an educated nut job, but someone who has definitely fallen into uh, the rabbit hole and has given up on any legitimate science in her career. Now, this is the issue. This is where I feel we have fallen into a trap that I don't know how we ever get out of, which is the fact that we have lost any semblance of truth. We now just have opinions and we have pieces of data that feed what our opinions are. There are people that we just bashed on social media that are spreading this pandemic video around saying, this is the truth. Finally, all, you know, everything I said about coronavirus was a hoax. Liberate Michigan, liberate Iowa, liberate America. Let us get back to work. I need a haircut. Open up the salons. Excuse me. Um, but on the flip side, you spent a day online. Google, I believe, was the, was the term, was the uh, research facility you got your data from. It's my search engine of choice. Understood. I personally, I like to use Microsoft Edge. Sure. That's how I operate. You like but it. I get it. I love edging. Oh, my God. That is so awesome. When you finally let go, whew, I mean, you, you got to wipe your forehead. Um, but here's the issue is why from a purely objective, you know, stance, why is it that the data that she's stating is illegitimate, but the data that you're pulling down off of Google, we, we are equally as likely to just accept as fact. Um, well, I would say, you know, you don't necessarily have to take what I say as fact. Uh, in fact, I will be glad to share my sources, um, all of which are backed up um, with actual legitimate sources. This is my problem, is the fact that we now, no, 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 and there's no answer. There's no right. solution that I'm aware of. But you just said legitimate sources. Now, somebody defines her no, we don't agree with her. You and I just, we clearly do not agree with her. We don't agree with Mickey Willis. But if he showed up to my house with a bottle of Cabernet and some flowers and those eyes, I'd be agreeing to a lot of things that I normally would say no to. But we agree that we do not believe what they're putting forth. You're saying here are sources that I do believe in. Less than why is it sources that I trust because I can okay. look at the at the, the the work and see you know and and look more into it myself. And over the past decade in America, there has been a growing uh, uh, faction of our society that does not believe and trust the sources that you are trusting, and that they are basing opinions without any sources, without any facts. There's the, the fact that coronavirus was a hoax, that it was uh, a, a, a false scare. Not only is it still going on, but our president is one of the people who originally threw out the idea that this was a trumped up issue, pardon the pun. Oh, did I just throw out the, the, the mother of all puns? But the president <laughs> of the America, he sat there and said that this is a Democrat hoax, this is fake news, and this is just something that the Democrats are trying to hype us up on um, prior to him changing his mind and saying, oh, wow, this is, this is actually pretty bad. But they are, they are looking for a source, and all they need is somebody to step forward and verbalize it. They now latch on to that person and say, see, everything I said was right. How is that, from a purely objective perspective, any different than what you're doing right now? Uh, again, I think it's because she is making statements that have already been proven false repeatedly. And, and the statement from the World Health Organization is proven false by her statements 
to the to to the uh, uh, to the people spreading this video. But but well, for people, right? But but there's it we've lost in general. We have lost any acceptance that there is a fact, that there is a uncontrovertible fact. This is something that happened. It is now just opinions, and we are looking for experts to back up what we feel is our version of the truth. But at the end of the day, the people- And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that that's where we're at right now. But But the the fact that you're, 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 you're pulling your information from what you define as trusted sources? Yes. Can you give me examples of those trusted sources? I mean, I you know, major universities, um, science- Trusted source. <clears throat> trusted, trusted source. Trusted source. Uh, scientists with, you know, multiple years background in, you know, virology, uh, infectious diseases, things of that nature. Trusted source. I, I you know, I, I could go on and on. But and what I'm saying is the fact that you are comfortable with the level of education, sophistication, culturalization that you have. You are comfortable that when they state something, you 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 um, internalize it as okay, this is a fact. I will give it credence. Yes, you will give it credence. There is a a large percentage of this population in America that are going to look at that video and say, here is a virologist. She was involved in uh, a, a lot of important research, and what she's stating is facts. And I agree with it, and I don't trust the world organizations. I don't trust universities because they're, they're, they're looking to um, uh, uh, patent items and make money off of it. They're looking to publish. They're looking to get government funding. I don't trust the government because this, they're, they're using this as a way to control people. So therefore, What's being said on the opposite, the stuff that I don't want to believe in, I will just write off as not facts, but I will cling to something that I can state agrees with my worldview. But what's, what's interesting to me is that the, at, the, at the end of the day, this woman is really a grifter, just trying to make money off of this. Because, you know, the timing of it is very interesting because she just had a new book come out. Oh, yeah. But- what a new book um which they if one of the lines in the pandemic video uh that mickey willis says is he refers to the quote plague of corruption and what is the title of her book plague of corruption restored on a second Ron. in the promise of science <laughs> please hit me so with when you're talking book. sorry so when you're talking about this plague of corruption you're talking about some big names in the industry. Exactly. Throwing a book plug in there while these people out there don't even know it. Uh, I would also like to say this book, Plague of Corruption, she co-wrote with Kent Heckin Lively. Uh, oh, he's good. Known, he's a known anti-vaxxer, uh, best known for a blog entry on the Age of Autism website titled Plague, an Alliance of the Free People of Middle Earth, where he uses a Lord of the Rings analogy featuring himself as the hero attempting to defeat the evil forces of Middle Earth, those that believe in science and vaccines. The foreword to her book is written by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., another well-known anti-vaxxer. So when you are sharing the video, and again, there are people out there that are like, this is the truth, I told you, and those are the people you're never going to get back. What frustrates me are the people that are like, hey, I saw this. It made me think. I wanted to share it. You should look at it. Listen, there is an old saying out there that facts don't give a fuck about your feelings. Well, you know what? Science doesn't give a fuck about your feelings either. You know, whatever your feelings are doesn't matter. Um, and, and the same people that shared Plandemic were the same people that shared the video that Dr. Erickson and Dr. Masahi put out that's also been taken down. Um, people, you know, again, you've got the lunatic fringe of this country that is going to believe any conspiracy. Dr. Fausti is the, the, uh, Mario Cuomo's, uh, Edgar but, Cuomo, his son. But uh, people, you know, people need to understand the, the danger of sharing it. There's a reason these videos keep being taken down. Facebook has taken this video down. YouTube, Vimeo 
have taken it down because of disseminating dangerous information. She's saying wearing a mask is dangerous because you can reinfect yourself with the virus. You can't. If you are infected with a virus, you can't reinfect yourself. Hold on. A mask will protect you, plain and simple, whether you want to believe Brian. it or not, whether you like it or not. Okay. That's where it comes. That's what, what, Brian? Hold on. You're telling me that our listeners right now have the opinion of a, uh, of a published virologist named whatever her fucking name is. I'm not even, I don't want to give her any more. No, no, no. What, I thought, what is she then? She was, she, I forget what her, 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 she's a, she's a researcher, but she's not a virologist. She has no, I thought she was real background in infectious diseases or viruses. I thought that she had like solved HIV before it leaked out. <laughs> if you believe Mickey Willis, yes, but no. That's, <laughs> okay. Um, I was just going to say some shit. I don't remember what it was, so let's just move <laughs> on. But I did have another question for you from this video. Okay. And it's something I have seen multiple times. I, I guess it's a, it's a smooth transition. But one thing I've seen multiple times this week in social media is the allegation that hospitals are being compensated dramatically if they label deaths as related to the coronavirus. That, that is what is being said, that Medicare is paying you 13000 for uh, a patient that died of, of COVID-19, that you know, if they had to be intubated and put on a ventilator, you're being paid 39000 No fact to it. Repeatedly debunked but it is, it, it's something that gets traction in the conspiracy theory crowd. So it is something that people will continue to run with. You know, again, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't want to get political about this, but when you have a president that will repeat falsehoods repeatedly, regardless of how often they have been debunked or, 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 or proven wrong, then why should we be surprised when other people use that same tactic. I mean, think about what Mickey Willis was saying when he was like, well, she, she, you know, she did a doctorate that changed the way people treated HIV AIDS. You know, is it any different than saying, well, many people are saying this, people are saying we're the best, people are saying this is the best deal, people are saying yes. the tests are perfect, people are saying the transcript is perfect. You know, is hyperbole like that that we see in pandemic anything different than the hyperbole we see on an ongoing basis from Donald Trump and this administration? No, absolutely not. It's exa it is a direct extension of it. Now, my question to you is, how do you, what course of action do you take when you see something like the, uh, you're on uh, uh, Twitter and you see somebody that you know has uh, retweeted a, uh, a link to this video saying, hey, I'm not saying that this is right, but they make some interesting points here. What do you? What is your urge to do at that moment? And what do you do? Do you respond? Do you blast the person? Do you unfollow them? What does What does Ron do? I, you know, I don't. I, I try not to blast people because I don't think that's productive. Yeah, you know, I, I think you know the people I follow on Facebook, the people I follow on Twitter. Like I know most of them well enough to say, all right, this person it has an open enough mind where if I, you know, and I'm not going to call them out in person, but I might just send them a note and say, hey, look, you know, you shared this, here's some facts about what you shared or here or what have you. Um, but there are other people that are just, you know, they, they've drunk the Kool-Aid and yeah. I'm just, I, you know, a lot, I mean, I use that 30 day snooze feature on Facebook a lot. And there are definitely, there yeah. have been people that I've unfriended on Facebook because I've seen them sharing uh, knowingly false memes, you know, videos, information. And I know anything I say is not going to um, change anything in their mindset. So if I at least unfriend them, then maybe some of my friends won't see the crap that they're trying to spread around there. And maybe that will stem okay. the flow of information to an extent. Interesting. Very interesting. What I've started to do, I, it, it, and it's weird, it, there's, there's ebbs and flows um, I go through periods of time where I will write a paragraph response and then delete it because I sit there and I say, this isn't going to go anywhere. This is not going to open up their minds. 
And all I'm doing is falling into the trap of them now calling, you know, attacking, counterattacking me, saying you're a sheep. You just do whatever the government wants. You need to, you know, you know, uh, uh, use your brain for yourself and just, uh, you know, stop eating from the trough. Um, there are times where I will reply with, um, uh, uh, this is fake and just write, this is fake. Right. Um, there, are t- uh, what I started, what I started to do, I think it was yesterday. I've done it a couple times is I just write, okay, with a period, <laughs> like, like I, and I cannot tell you, um, the number of people that I know on Facebook through the music scene that are, um, they are the, uh, the right they are the uh, spreaders of videos like this. They are the spreaders of the comments like, this is a hoax. Um, there are, I, I cannot count the number of times over the past month that Bill Gates's name has come up uh. as, um, you know, like, fuck Bill Gates. And I, meanwhile, these people are using Microsoft computers at work. <laughs> like, um, but like I'm going to get on my Microsoft Surface and I'm going to tell you what a bad man Bill Gates is because he's going to inject nanobots with his vaccine into me and try and give me the mark of the beast. I know what's going on, Brian. Yeah, so it's just like, I, I, it's, there's so many people where I see this shit and it's like, I don't do a goddamn thing because it's exhausting to go after each and every one of them to sit there and be like... And hey. I think that's kind of, and maybe this is the direction we take the podcast in year three is you know part of part of rather than at attacking people online or trying to educate people online that are sharing this video i took that time to research everything that was wrong with the video knowing that we could talk about it here on the podcast so maybe that will be an outlet for you in the future my friend now you have links to a lot of the statements that you made or no i do and i will share them um on our facebook page I was going to say, why don't you send me over those and I can put that up on our, uh, on the blog page on our website. I will, I will forward those over to you as well, my friend. All righty. Excellent. My goodness. Um, so fuck Plandemic, fuck Mickey Willis, fuck his father, Jose Willis and uh, Frank Willis. And what you talking about, Willis? And uh, whatever this lady is, um, the doctor, uh, it's just, it's we're fucked as a country. And I, and genuinely, I think it's one of the reasons why, you know, I know it's that uh, it is a, um, it's very easy to attack the federal government and Donald Trump for the fact that we are being hit harder than any other country with this thing. Um, you look at countries like um, South Korea, you know, um, who are literally um, just across a, a small divide with China. And, uh, you know, they're, they jumped into action very fast. They immediately started doing testing. Um, they did not have the type of devastation that we have. No. Um, and you look at, you know, like you wonder why are we so fucked? And I genuinely think that the type of behavior that needed to be done in the early stages of this, we are too divided of a society where we have lost a sense of caring for the other American. It is yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. It's, this is about me, myself, and I need to stand on a, uh, 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 on a soapbox and I need to preach about what my beliefs are. And there's so much disrespect for your fellow Americans on both sides. On both sides, there's just disrespect. I mean, the type of uh, uh, language that you and I have used for people that we philosophically disagree with, it's horrifying, but it's become so normalized. And, and speaking about the testing real quick, um, I would recommend people go watch uh, Sunday's Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. I uh, did a, a very good rundown of the difference between the testing that took place in South Korea and the testing that took place in the United States and the difference in the coronavirus uh, cases and deaths in both countries. 
So you, you just mentioned that. I think it's a, it's a good 20 minutes for people to watch. And listen, we don't want to have to keep talking about this administration. We don't want to have to keep talking about this coronavirus. We would love to go back to the middle school humor that made us famous in the podcast world. Uh, but this is it for right now. So if you, if you stay home, if you don't get sick, if you don't share bad information, uh, we, will bat, we will be going back to the, the dumb people that we were before. But for now... You got you got the you got the educated Ron and Brian going coming at you, but there is a way for people to get that sophomoric sense of uh, analysis of the news. Really, how would one go about that? Well, there is something called Patreon. What? And there is the Ron and Brian podcast. On Patreon, every week we do 30 minutes of information about things that are going on in the world that are, how do I say, a little less serious than our podcast? A little offbeat, if you will. Now, uh, last week, for instance, what did we talk about? You know what? I really don't remember because I was drinking. Um... You don't remember what we talked about just a week ago? <laughs> it's, it's bad when I get drinking like that during the Patreon. I mean, you really get to experience Drunk Ron during the Patreon. Well, we spoke about the Pentagon releasing alien videos and how nobody gave a shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that now. We talked about Tupac Shakur getting his unemployment check. Oh, in Kentucky. Yeah, that was good stuff. We talk, staying in Kentucky, we, uh, the Kentucky mayor who found a naked bleeding woman in his cellar. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Harrison Ford and uh, his uh, airplane issues. Dude wants to die in an airplane, no doubt. We talked about the woman that is selling penis face masks and raising money for charity. 56K, if I remember. And we also talked about the uh, European uh, Music Festival in Panama Beach, um, where Europeans have been stranded because they are not allowed to fly home. I mean, there's some really, really wacky stuff that's still going on in the world today, and that is what we say for the Patreon right now. And you can sign up right now. Go to our website, click the link onto our Patreon. You literally have, I think it's about six different levels of support, all the way from, I think, as little as $5 a month, all the way up to $10,000 a month. Um, and we want to thank all of our subscribers, regardless of the level that you are comfortable in. I mean, originally, our, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the entry level for joining our Patreon was uh, $500 a month. It was and up we, there. We, we got aggressive early, and it was a mistake. No, the mistake was that we should have done it more. However, as a result of these unprecedented times, and... Um, just, just you know, the, the, the sense of being uh, in, in peace with what is going on with uh, the average American right now, we lowered all of the tiers so that right now you can join our Patreon for as little as $5 a month. That is the same price as a cup of coffee that you can get at Starbucks if it's still open right now. Listen, there's, there's a lot of people out there trying to get your money. You, you'll be sitting there, you'll get an ASPCA commercial, you hear the Sarah McLaughlin movie. Uh, kids, uh, you know, the kids need to be fed. Kids shouldn't have cancer, blah, blah, blah. I would argue Ron and Brian are just as worthy a cause. So again, go to ronandbrianpodcast.com, go to the upper right-hand corner of the homepage and click on Become a Patron. Uh, Brian, before we go too long here, uh, breaking news coming in. Uh, you had posted a picture on our Instagram page earlier this week about the death of 25-year-old Ahmoud Arbari, and I'm sure I'm yes. that name up. Um, breaking news now out of Georgia, Gregory McMichael and his son Travis McMichael have been arrested and charged with murder and aggravated assault. So hopefully justice will be done. Now, it took are you two and a half are you months for them to get arrested. But are you implying that it's because we sent a photo that we had literally screen captured off of somebody else's Facebook page and posted that to our social media? Are you saying that we are the social warriors who cause change? Listen, I, I'm, I'm not trying to give any, uh, anybody any credit, um, but uh, I, will, uh, I feel better knowing that these two uh, Good. pieces of shit have been arrested and hopefully uh, will be put in jail for a while. 
what kills me is that there's video proof of that. Yeah, I, I, I don't, this is, again, I, I, we're going to run a little long here. That's all right. It's two years. What the fuck? Yeah. Take as much time as we want. The fact that you see these videos, you see videos of white guys in masks, carrying long guns, carrying assault weapons, you know, going into the Capitol at Michigan and breaking into where their Congress is voting. And they get to just stand around and do whatever. Meanwhile, you've got uh, you've got a, a black guy just jogging, doing not bothering anyone, gets fucking shot to death. Yep. And that's that's America. And those guys walked free. Right. Up until today, they two and a half months. And again, reverse the situation. A black guy or two, uh, a black father and son shoot a white guy jogging. It's all over the news. It's all over yep. social media. Yes. Black people try and bring weapons into a state capital. They'll be dead before Not they happening. hit the metal detectors. Not dead happening. Before they hit the metal detectors. Absolutely. This is the shit you know, that drives me crazy. You know, what, you know who else would be dead if they hit the uh, metal detectors? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask, but who? Don Shula, legendary oh. Miami Dolphins coach, died this past week at the age of 90, um, uh, survived by uh, his wife, Marianne, along with his children, Dave, Donna, Sharon, Anne, and Mike. Apparently, Don Shula did not have a strong pull-out game. Uh, played uh, in the NFL, uh, was a uh, ninth-round pick out at John Carroll University in 1951. He joined the Cleveland Browns then went on to play with the Baltimore Colts, Washington Redskins through 1975, came back as a coach, was later hired by the Colts as their head coach in 1963, but is most known for the work he did with the Miami Dolphins when he joined after 1969's team, and I said 69. Nice. And uh, leading them, as we all know, went on that great run in 1971. Two, the where they went, Dolphins. they went 17 and 0, winning the Super Bowl. Still goes down as the only perfect season in NFL history. Very nice. Do you uh, know who well, else would be dead by the time that they hit the metal detector? Who else, Brian? Who? Well, electronic music legend pioneer uh, uh, Florian Schneider from the band Kraftwerk. Touching my monkey. Died at the age of 73. I never listened to any craft work. I, I didn't get it, if I'm being 100% honest. Burp, 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 a synthesizer. Radioactivity. Schneider formed the influential group and multimedia project with his good friend Ralph Kucha in 1970. Kraftwerk was its use of electronic instruments that included homemade and custom made devices have been widely credited with pioneering electronic music and influencing various genres across the music spectrum, including hip hop, synth pop, and rock with their soundscapes, experimentation, technical innovations. And don't forget Schneider's great work um, uh, as the super on 70s sitcom one day at a time that and i wanted him to i wanted him to bang bonnie so hard but it never happened no never did happen uh, speaking of never pass away speaking of never happening was my interest in the band bad company really? and that lack that lack of interest is going to continue now that lead singer brian howe passed away this past week cardiac arrest at the age of 66 couldn't name you one song that Bad Company does. Bad Company, till the nope. day I die. No. All right. Well, what are you gonna do? Uh, apparently, he had uh, he had just tweeted on April twenty sixth uh, that his uh, his remaining life goal was to appear on TV with Ricky Gervais. Uh, unfortunately, will not happen now. You know what would have happened if he had been on TV with Ricky Gervais? I what's that? One of us would have watched it, and uh, we would have talked about it in our uh, ongoing bit. What are you watching? What are you watching, Brian? What this, are you watching? This past week, I watched an amazing documentary on Netflix, but you've got to be in the appropriate mood for it. It is called uh, Cracked Up, the Daryl Hammond Story. 
Uh, the Saturday Night Live star reveals the extreme abuse he suffered during childhood, the trauma that nearly destroyed his life as an adult. Interesting. Talk to me. About not a that. shocker. Not a shocker. He grew up in Florida. <laughs> I just remember Daryl Hammond. He was the guy that hung around Saturday Night Live way too long. Well, like, he was, he was the, the guy master. that eventually, after so long, you were like, wow, he's still on this show, huh? Well, the thing about him was that he's the white Keenan Thompson. You know, he's just, he's, he, he does all the characters. And, and he did an incredible Bill Clinton. He did a great Chris Matthews. He did an amazing Dick Cheney. Like, he had the ability to wear a prosthetic on his face, um, put on a wig, and he was able to actually make you as the viewer see not just Daryl Hammond, but you got to see the person that he was representing. Listen, he was, uh, he was interviewed uh, a few times on the Howard Stern Show, and uh, just very interesting stories uh, that he would tell there, so I can just imagine uh, about this documentary, what it was like. Oh, my God. It is, uh, I mean, they, it, he goes into a lot of detail um, about what his childhood was like um, and uh, the effect that it had on his life as he was uh, entering an adulthood. All right. Very nice. Um, I started watching the, uh, the series uh, Hollywood on Netflix. Uh, Excellent. It, I've enjoyed it so far. Uh, uh, with, uh, it's from Ryan Murphy, uh, one half of the, the group that brought, brings you American Horror Story. Um, who is in it? Dylan McDermott, uh, Jim Parsons. Uh, there's a bunch of actors that are, are, are character actors. You'll see them and be like, oh yeah, I know that person can't think of any of the names uh, but it is somewhat of a retelling of the early Hollywood story after the war um, about a group of people trying to integrate Hollywood um, so I'm I'm uh, well, I think four or five episodes into it very entertaining um, dare I say I smell Emmy for Jim Parsons in this one um, really he plays a, a, an incredibly sleazy horrible Hollywood agent um, very over the top, but uh, it's it's been very enjoyable so much. Again, if you really uh, enjoy old Hollywood, old Hollywood movies, it really captures all of that era very well, from the coloring to the to the to the to the uh, the the what am I think? What am I trying to say here? The the monologues, the everything. It just the really script, captures that the era. dialogue, the character the dialogue, development. Yes. So I would highly recommend checking out Hollywood on Netflix. All right. I also and... started watching Upload on Amazon Prime. Kind of 50-50 as to whether I'm going to finish that or not. Okay, that's fair. That's all I got for you. There we go. Wow, I think uh, apart from uh, apart from Plandemic, we really didn't get into our coronavirus stories, which I think is a good thing. I think sometimes, What's coronavirus? Uh, well, and this is shocking, Brian. Uh, you may, uh, I don't know if you saw this or not, uh, but I read this story on the New York Post this week where apparently uh, New York City is storing bodies inside refrigerated trucks in a Brooklyn parking lot out in Sunset Park. I don't understand. Why would they do that? So apparently there are so many bodies um, that there's a long-term uh, storage uh, facility there where they've just lined up these trucks from 36th to 39th streets along 2nd Avenue, and they're just uh, loading bodies with forklifts into the... Have you heard about these refrigerated trucks, Brian? No, I, I'm confused because I don't understand why they're not just go, uh, sending the bodies to the morgue. Uh, because there's so many of them, Brian. There's so many bodies there. What about um, sending the bodies to the funeral homes? Uh, they can be stored safely there. I don't know if you remember uh, the funeral homes were putting them in U-Haul trucks. That was last week's episode. You remember that? What Wait, remember that? I'm I'm confused. Like, where? Why aren't we? Why aren't we just burying these bodies? Uh, well, they're burying some of them um, out uh, on that Hart Island uh, until they can be claimed. But the really running out of space is to bury bodies in New York City right now. This is awful. Yeah, you should, uh, you should keep an eye on it. You're right there in, uh, in Queens. You should really uh, keep an eye on what's going on in the city there. Just, my just look out my window and see if they start uh, uh, storing refrigerated uh, uh, trucks there. I, it's, 
I, I can't believe that this is what we've, 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 we've gotten to the point of. This is our America. But you can change that this November. That's all we're saying. Uh, no Brian, uh, I think it's about time for us to go do a little Patreon. Uh, I think 104 was a great success. Happy anniversary to you, Ronald. Happy anniversary to you. Two years behind us, many more ahead of us. Amazing. I couldn't have said it any better. Could have said it far worse. (laughs) All right. We're going to roll on out of here. So thank you, everybody. We will catch you all next week on the Ron and Brian Podcast. Thank you.